In this video, I'm going to show you how to hack your Nintendo DSi or DSi XL. The Nintendo DSi is a very interesting handheld to me. I didn't jump on it while it was still new, instead going right to the 3DS from a DS Lite. Having had one for a couple years now, I really enjoy the updates it made to the Nintendo DS, and the screens are awesome. And thanks to the system's built-in SD card, you are able to run Homebrew and games off of it. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the process of getting your Nintendo DSi hacked. That way you can enjoy everything the system has to offer directly from that SD card slot as previously mentioned, as well as being able to use it to back up your own DS library. Now, as with all console mods, there is a small risk of damaging your Nintendo DSi, so you continue from this point at your own risk. The chances are really small, but they do exist, so you have been warned. So let's go ahead and dive in. So to get started with modding your Nintendo DSi or DSi XL, you really don't need a whole lot. You just need a Nintendo DSi or DSi XL system with a working camera for this video. There are three exploits for the Nintendo DSi. We are covering Memory Pit in today's. And it does require you to have a working camera. So, I mean, you can check your camera if it's working. Hello, phone. If it isn't, you will need to just look up one of the different exploits that can use Flipnote or the web browser. But again, we're going to be using the camera app for today's video. Next, you are going to need an SD card, and any size from one gigabyte to two terabytes works in the Nintendo DSi, but you're really not gonna need that much space. So for today's, we're gonna be using this 32 gigabyte micro SD card in a full size adapter. And you just need to make sure that it is class eight or higher for read and write purposes on the Nintendo DSi. And then finally, a way to copy files onto your SD card. So we're going to go ahead and get this SD card hooked up to a computer. So as we begin, we need to make sure that our SD card is formatted into FAT32. If this is an SD card you've already been using on your Nintendo DSi system, you don't really need to worry about this. But if it's a new SD card, you can just right click on properties from inside of it and see if it's formatted to FAT32. If it is, you should be good to go ahead and use it. But if not, you will just need to format this to FAT32. So a couple of ways to do this, if you're using Windows and the SD card is under 32 gigabytes, you could just right click, format, FAT32, allocation size 32 kilobytes, quick format, done, cool, ready to go. Now if your SD card is bigger than 32 gigabytes, you won't have that FAT32 option under Windows by default, so you can download something like the FAT32 format tool from Ridge Corp Consultants, link to this will be in the description below, just click the image to download it. Select your drive letter, quick format, start, and you'll get your SD card formatted into FAT32, no problem. Just make sure you have the right drive selected so you don't delete all of your crap. And for all of you Mac and Linux users out there, just go ahead and get your SD card formatted into FAT32 with whatever programs work for your OS. With your SD card formatted into FAT32, we're going to download and place some initial files, the first of which being the Twilight menu for Nintendo DSi. So, in the Twilight menu GitHub page, download the latest release of Twilight menu DSi. Next, we're going to download the dump tool from Zugi. So link to this again in the description below, come to this GitHub page, grab the latest version, dumptool.nds. Now that you have these downloaded, go ahead and go back into your SD card, drag the dump tool right on in, and then get Twilight Menu Extracted using 7-Zip or some other extracting tool. And inside you'll find an underscore NDS folder so drag that into the SD card you're going to use on your DSi. And you'll also see a boot.nds file, so go ahead and drag that in as well. Now, if you plan on making use of the emulators that come pre-packaged with the Twilight menu, you could copy over the pre-existing ROMs folder. It just gives you a nice little folder to separate your ROMs into. And then an SNE mole config file as well. These are optional, you don't really need them for the exploit, but if you plan on using the emulation stuff, it can be very helpful. But there we go, initial files placed, we are now ready to prep our exploit. So for the next part of our setup, we need to have a folder in use to put DSi pictures. So the easiest way to get this is to just use the DSi itself, that way you don't have to create multiple folders. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move this SD card temporarily back over to my DSi. So just get this SD card inserted into the system. Gonna get the system powered on. 
enter the camera app. And under the SD card menu here, it is now creating the file path that we need. So if it says SD card not found, you're probably going to need to format the SD card again. So it's also a good way to troubleshoot if your SD card is going to work for this process. But from here, we can now check which version of the DSi camera app we have, as there are two, and you're going to need to choose a specific file based on which one you have. So click on the album button. And right here above your total images, you'll see some labels, star, club, heart, and a Facebook app. So if you have a Facebook app or not, is going to tell you which version of the exploit we're going to need. So once you have seen if you have the Facebook app or not, you can go ahead and turn the system back off, take the SD card out, and move it back over to your computing device. So with the SD card placed back on my computer, you can see we now have a new folder inside here named private DS app, and then our numbered folder here. So everything is all set. So now we are going to download the appropriate version of the exploit that we need directly from the DSi Guide Hacks website, which this video is based off of. So if you did have a Facebook icon, grab the version that says if you did, and if you didn't, grab the version that says that you didn't. So with this file downloaded, we just need to put it inside that private folder, DS folder, app folder, and then the numbered folder and overwrite the existing one that is already there. And there we go, all set. We are now ready to trigger the exploit on our DSi, so go ahead and get this SD card ejected from your computing device and back into your DSi. All right, so SD card into the DSi. That is backwards, got it, cool. Anyway, here we are. So from here, power on the DSi system. Now enter the DSi camera app. Once the app is loaded, make sure you're in the SD card menu and then click on the album. And if everything's placed correctly, you should see the screen flash like that. And then it will bring you into the Twilight menu setup screen. So from here, you can set languages for your games and all that other stuff just leave everything set as system I'm sure that's going to be accurate for your regions and types you can select your region from this next menu and you will then be brought into the twilight menu so once you're brought to the main twilight menu you to select a number of different things on this menu. But the one that we're interested in running first is the dump tool that we placed on our SD card earlier. This will make a NAND dump of our DSi so we can always return it to stock if desired. So go ahead and just launch this with your A button. And after it boots, you'll see that it just says press A to begin a NAND dump. So just press A to do so. And then wait for it to do its thing. It shouldn't take too long, but you never know. Just, just be patient with it. And once the process finishes, go ahead and press start to exit. And that'll bring you back into the Twilight menu. But we're actually going to power down the system at this point. And we're going to take that SD card out to back up that NAND backup we just completed as well as prep our unlaunch install files. So just get this back into your computing device of choice. With the SD card back in your computing device of choice, you'll notice that there is now a new folder inside that has a really long name. This is your Nintendo DSi NAND backup. So this is very important to keep safe as mentioned previously. If anything should happen to you in the next part of installing unlaunch, you can hard mod your system and restore this NAND dump to bring the system back to life. So copy this over to your computer, back it up in multiple locations, so that way it will always be safe. And once you have it backed up, you can go ahead and delete the dump from the SD card itself. So to get the unlaunch installer, you're going to need to copy one of these two URLs into your browser to have it directly download. So these will both be linked in the description below. So we have the main URL here and then a web backup of that same URL. So just try one or the other. And when successful, you should be given an unlaunch.zip folder. So just go ahead and get this extracted. 
and inside you'll find unlaunch.dsi. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this to the root of our SD card. And we're also going to download the latest version of God Mode 9i to put on the root of our SD card just in case we can't launch this through Twilight Menu for whatever reason, we could use God Mode 9 to do so. So we're going to download the latest release of God Mode 9i for DSi. And I'm just going to make a new folder inside this SD card real quick, name it apps, just because I like to organize things like that. But we're just going to drag God Mode 9i into that folder for now. And with that, we are now done with our SD card for the moment. So again, just get it taken out, put back into your DSi. All right, so get the SD card inserted into the DSi system. Get the system powered back on. And we're gonna run our memory pit exploit from the Nintendo DSi camera app again to boot into the Twilight menu. So again, click on album. And we're going to boot into Twilight Menu. And now from the menu, we're going to launch the Unlaunch DSi Installer. Now, if for whatever reason the Unlaunch Installer doesn't work through the Twilight Menu, you can head into, you can head into God Mode 9. can head into your SD card and then select the unlaunch.dsi file and see if you have better luck this way. And once the unlaunch installer has booted up, just navigate down to the install now portion on the top screen, press A, and you should get an installation complete message that pops up here at the bottom. And once done, go ahead and click on Power Down. Now from here, go ahead and reboot your Nintendo DSi, and it should bring you into the Unlaunch menu by default. And that means you are now completely exploited and ready to go right from the get-go. But who wants to launch into this menu every time you boot up your DSi? That's not great. So instead, let's go ahead and auto-boot this into the Twilight menu. So under Options, press A. Now press A on the No Button option here. And navigate to the Twilight Menu++ plus plus option here, and press A. So now whenever you boot up your Nintendo DSi, it will auto-boot into the Twilight Menu. So, go down to Save and Exit, press A, and we can now turn off our DSi, turn it back on, and we'll be brought directly into the Twilight Menu. But with Unlaunch installed and we're auto-booting into the Twilight menu, we are ready to begin using our DSi to its fullest. So, we can begin loading up games, homebrew, all kinds of fun stuff on here, configuring Twilight menu to our desires. But, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to clean up the SD card, just to make it look a little bit nicer inside this menu. And to get rid of things like the Unlaunch installer that we no longer need. So, I'm just going to power that down. And we'll take out that SD card and move it over to our computer once more. With the SD card back to the computer, we could get rid of unlaunch.dsi. You could also get rid of dumptool.nds. You don't need it anymore. But if you want to keep it for any reason, you could add it to something like the apps folder so that way it just doesn't appear on the start menu of Twilight Menu. And then inside your private folder, DS, app, and then the 484E494A folder, you could get rid of the pit.bin that you placed earlier to trigger our memory pit exploit. Now that we auto boot into Twilight Menu, it is no longer needed. And this lets you use the camera app for the DSi once again. Now you'll also notice that there are a number of folders that auto appear when you start up your DSi. So if you want them to not show up, you can just hide them. And then the same thing with like the God Mode 9i folder, you can just hide this as well.
And then you could also hide the boot.nds file, so that way it doesn't show up on the Twilight menu. This way, whenever you boot into the Twilight menu, you're going to see an apps folder and your ROMs folder. So again, you can place game ROMs in any of these folders as you see fit. They also have a nice NDS folder in here. So if you want to start loading up Nintendo DS games into your Twilight menu, you can easily just add in a game. And then its associated save file can go right into the saves folder. So here is an example for Pokemon Heart Gold that I backed up using God Mode 9i yesterday for a short. But then for other examples, you could load up GBA games or any other ROM format that is listed in this folder as Twilight Menu has an emulator associated with each of these different file types. And then again, DSiWare can go in here as well and launch directly from the Twilight Menu. But with that SD card back in the DSi powered on, boot into the Twilight Menu, and you can see that it is a lot cleaner on the menu now, and we can just go into our apps folder to see homebrew or different things like that, or into the ROMs folder, and we can load up GBA games through GBA Runner 2. Or Nintendo DS games directly. So just for an example here is that heart gold we transferred over. And there we go, Pokemon Gold has loaded up. And it has my wife's save file right there, ready to go. Perfect. So as you can see, getting your games up and running is just that simple. And then at any time you can return to the Twilight menu just by tapping the power button. And it'll bring you right back. And the Twilight menu does remember the last folder you were in, so it's nice and convenient. Now if you'd like to run games from slot 1 or configure Twilight menu settings, just press select at any point. And that will bring you to a classic DS screen here. And if you have a game card inserted into slot 1, it'll show up here on the top. You can activate PictoChat or DS Download Play. Or you can launch the last loaded game. And then if you want to change settings for Twilight Menu, you just go down to the Nintendo DS settings option here. Press A. And that'll bring you into the Twilight Menu settings right here where you can adjust different things such as themes, splash screen settings, various options. So there's a lot of cool things to mess with in here. And it's really worth your time to explore it and set it up to your heart's content. So just some settings I like to turn off. I turn off the Twilight Menu splash screen. Turn off the Rocket Robs logo. Sorry, Rocket Robs. I appreciate your work, but I don't want to see it every time I turn it on. And then you can navigate different menus by pressing R, L, X, or Y. But once you've adjusted settings to your liking, just go ahead and tap on the Twilight Menu Plus Plus entry right here. That'll save everything and bring you back into the Twilight Menu. And with that, you are now ready to enjoy your Nintendo DSi or DSi XL in a fully hacked state where you can easily load things onto the SD card and run them through Twilight Menu. But thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope it helps you get your DSi set up to your heart's content to run your games, back up your games, and check out the vast library of homebrew DS titles. Here at the end, just the usual favors to ask. Thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads always coming your way, and we love having you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel to keep it going, be sure to check out that join button here on YouTube or that Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Every little bit helps, and it brings this content directly to you. Just super grateful to have you all as our champions. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, y'all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.